This morning's scripture lesson is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. And it re concerns Jesus predicting his death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. <clears throat> Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed for, of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. And this is the end of this morning's scripture lesson. So welcome to our second Sunday in Lent. Uh, this week, as we move on our journey towards the cross, we find in our scripture for today what I find to be a, just a very interesting interaction between Peter and Jesus. So as Jesus is trying to tell his followers what is going to happen to him, in the very near future, Peter takes it upon himself to pull Jesus aside and rebuke him for what he is saying to the people in that moment. Now, when you read those words or you hear those words from the scripture for today, does it stand out to you at all? Does it sound weird in your ear that Peter would rebuke Jesus? Well, maybe we should start with just defining what the word rebuke means, because it's not a word that we use in our society today, right? It's not a common vocabulary word for us. We don't walk around saying things like, I rebuke you, right? We don't say that anymore. But to rebuke someone is to show or express deep disapproval or strong criticism of that person. So now that we've de defined what it means to rebuke someone, what do you think of when you consider that Peter has decided to rebuke Jesus? Now, I want you to imagine that you are one of the other disciples and you're sitting there and Jesus is trying to teach you. And what he's really trying to do in this moment is to prepare you for the hardships that you are going to witness you, the things that you are going to see and to prepare you for your life after his crucifixion. So he's trying to give you that information and he's trying to give it to you in a very plain and easy way to understand. And Peter just stands up and he says, uh, hey, Jesus, just come over here for a second. Let me let me just talk to you real quick over here uh, about what you're saying here. Right. And I imagine Peter in this moment, because Peter being who he was, is expressing to Jesus his displeasure with what he is saying in a very animated way, right? Um, because we know a lot about Peter, and we know that he was a person that was very passionate, right? So can you imagine the expressions that must have been going across Jesus' face? as Peter was rebuking him. Now, I don't know about you guys. I know some people are great at keeping a poker face no matter what is being said to them. Uh, I have been told that I am not one of those people. 
Um, and I didn't realize this about myself, quite honestly, till Carlin told me that uh, she never has to wonder what I'm thinking because it's uh, generally very clear by my facial expressions in the moment. Um, but have you ever experienced that moment in your life when somebody says something to somebody else and you know something bad is going to happen? Immediately after those words have left their mouth, you know something's going to happen. It's like there's this moment of silence before everything is going to blow up, right? So maybe as you were growing up, you found one of your siblings arguing with your parents, and, a, and in a moment of passion, they crossed that line just a little bit too far. The thing that they had said to their parents was just a little bit too much. And I say your siblings arguing with your parents because I know none of you would have ever done that, right? But in that moment where those words have escaped their mouth, uh, that, that little second uh, before your parents reacted, didn't that feel like an eternity as you were waiting for what your parents would respond back to them? I'll, I'll tell you a situation that happened in my own life. In, in a previous job that I had, I was in a meeting with my boss and uh, my boss was giving it to me pretty good uh, about the quality of my work, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, I was struggling to learn a new computer program and just I wasn't keeping up with what I needed to. Uh, and instead of taking the criticism like I should have, uh, I decided at some point in my brain that I should say something back to her. Uh, and I said, how would you know what my work is like? All you do is go to meetings. The silence that was felt in that moment before she launched into uh, giving me it pretty good, and again, I deserved it, uh, was, was almost deafening to a point. It was like shocking that I would have said that to her, and, and rightfully so. But I think it's safe to, uh, to say we find, when they find themselves in this situation with Peter and Jesus going off to the side, what's interesting about it is we don't know exactly what Peter says to Jesus, right? Uh, in this account in Mark, we don't get that because as we talked about last week, Mark is all about the action, right? Mark just tells us what happens and then moves forward quickly. We just know that he pulls him aside and it's clear that he's saying something that is showing disapproval for what Jesus is trying to tell them is going to happen. And Jesus' response to Peter is a response that all the disciples are meant to hear. Uh, because we do get the recording of what Jesus says to Peter. And he expresses that in a very passionate way. He says to Peter, uh, get behind me, Satan. That's a pretty powerful statement to hear, right? Get behind me, Satan. You know, he's speaking to one of his disciples. He's, he's speaking to someone that he truly loves, right? Peter is not just some guy off the street that is coming in and rebuking Jesus. This is someone that's walked with him from the beginning of his ministry. Someone that Jesus clearly loves. Someone that is going to be told that they will be the rock in which the church will be built upon. So it may seem a bit harsh to hear Jesus essentially call Peter Satan in this moment. But I believe that Jesus is doing that in this moment to make sure that he gets the attention of all the disciples for what he has to say next to them. He does it so to make it clear to them that if they want to follow him, they have to deny themselves. They have to take up their cross in order to follow him. He tells them in chapter 8, verse 35, For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. So what does all of this mean for our own lives today? Well, I believe the first thing that we need to think about in this is the things that we are doing in our lives. Are we saying and are we living our lives in a way that would cause Jesus to rebuke us in the same manner that he did Peter? Because when you think about what Peter has done here in pulling Jesus aside to rebuke him, he is essentially saying to Jesus, listen, I know better than you. 
And what you're saying and what you're saying is going to happen isn't what should happen. So the questions we have to ask ourselves is, are we saying that to Jesus in our own lives? Are we doing it by the way that we act? Are we doing it by the way that we speak to others? Are we doing it by the way that we treat others? You know, we may be saying to ourselves or saying to Jesus, you know, I know that you say, Jesus, that I'm to love my neighbor as myself, but have you met that guy? He is the biggest jerk I've ever met. And if you knew him, Jesus, the way that I know him, you would never ask me to love him. You know, are we saying, I know that you tell me to take the gospel to others, but Jesus, it's just so hard to do in a world where no one wants to hear it anymore. And I know that they don't want to hear it, so I'm not even going to waste my time trying. Jesus, I know that you told me that we should be caring for the poor in this world, but Jesus, they're all just so lazy. And if they would even try to work, every single one of them, you know, they would be fine, but all they want is handouts. That's all that they want, so why should I want to help them? See, that is the way that we are living our lives at times, and that is the way that we are speaking to others. And that is the way that we are treating others. And if that is the case, brothers and sisters, I have to tell you, I'm afraid that we will be rebuked by Jesus. The second thing that I think we need to consider for our, from our scripture today is the question of, are we taking up our cross to follow Jesus? Now, that is a question that you have to answer for yourself. It's not one that I can answer for you. Now, we've gotten really good in our modern times, allowing ourselves to become focused on so many different things that are out there. You know, we as a people, we, we are fanatical, right, about politics or sports or our job. And ultimately, we struggle to remember that our responsibilities as Christians is to first take up our cross and follow Jesus. So in this Lenten season, as we move forward and we consider what it is that we should be giving up or doing or taking up in order to follow Jesus the way that we need to, the best place, I think, for us to start is to make sure that we are taking up our crosses to follow Jesus. Now, we hear that phrase a lot, take up your cross and follow me. Well, what does it mean to take up your cross and follow Jesus? Well, it means that you are willing to lay everything that you have on the altar. It means that you are willing to put nothing before your commitment to Christ. All the things that the world puts in front of you, you are willing to sacrifice them so that you can follow Jesus. So as we do move forward in this Lenten season, let us do just that. Let us make sure that we are following Jesus with our whole hearts and our whole minds. Let us make sure that we are living a life that will not lead us to be rebuked by him. And let us make sure that we are trusting in the promises that he has given to us. My challenge for you this week Sounds very simple in saying it, but is difficult in the execution. And that is for you to take up your cross and follow him. Amen.